Right now, we're going to go to our ABC News Courier Journal exclusive interview. Michael, you sat down with one of the Louisville police officers involved in that Breonna Taylor shooting. I did, George. Sergeant Jonathan Maddenley, he was one of the officers who burst through the door of Breonna Taylor's apartment on that fateful night in March when she was with her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker. Maddenley was shot and badly wounded, and this is the first time he is speaking publicly. Her death sparked nationwide outrage and anguish. 26-year-old medical worker Brianna Taylor shot and killed by Louisville police officers shortly after midnight on March 13th while executing a search warrant. Officers investigating a suspected drug operation allegedly linked to her ex-boyfriend. This morning, for the first time, Sergeant John Maddenley sharing publicly what he says happened that night. So we get up. I remember banging on the door, it's open hand, hard smacks, bam, 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 bam. First time didn't announce. Just hoping she would come to the door so everything was quiet, neighbors wouldn't come out. Can you hear anything in, from inside the apartment? Not at that you point. That? Okay. Not at that point. So after the first bang, um, nothing happened. I banged again. I yelled, please search warrant, please search warrant. You're yelling this. How many times do you yell that? Probably three times each with each bang. Mm -hmm. um, there was a total of six uh, bangs, six different knocks at the door while we're doing this. There were seven officers on the scene that night. One said he thought he heard movement inside the apartment. He said, stop. I can hear somebody coming up to the door. So we stop, we listen. Nobody says anything. We yell again, please search warrant. Open the door if you're there. Please search warrant. And uh, finally, I look back at my lieutenant who's in the stack back here. And he goes, go ahead and hit it. Even as you're hitting the door with yelling the ram, you're yelling. Warrant. Yes, everybody at this point. Everybody. Because that's what we do. All seven of you. All seven. That I know of. It sounded like it. That's mm -hmm. the typical, that's the typical how it goes every time. And that doesn't change. Kenneth Walker said that he and Brianna were, were screaming. Who is it? Said they never heard right. any announcement that it was the police. And, and, and what do you say to that? Maybe he didn't. But it there didn't. are also 11 neighbors who said the same thing that he said. Those 11 neighbors also said we didn't knock. Kenneth Walker says we knocked. The other witness says we knocked. So if you didn't hear us knock, you're not going to hear us announce. Maddenly says once the team enters the dark apartment, he sees two figures in the hallway. How far away from you? About 20, 25 feet. Probably, yeah, 20, 25 feet. And as soon as I turned the corner, I, my eyes went straight to the barrel of this gun. I could see the, the tip of it. And my eyes just focused in on it. Brianna's boyfriend, 27-year-old Kenneth Walker, a legal gun owner, fired a shot. Later telling investigators he fired because he didn't know who was bursting through the door. An FBI ballistics report saying it was Walker's bullet that struck Mattingly. As soon as I felt the, the smack on my leg and the heat, I boom, 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 returned four fire, returned shots, four shots. From start to finish, from the time I got shot till the time I'm on the ground and heard that last volley of shots, 12 seconds total. Help! Oh, my God! Yes, help! What's help. your name, sir? Mr. Walker said, I just fired a warning shot. I thought someone was breaking into my apartment. I was aiming down because I don't, I don't want to kill anyone. That, that, that was, was his statement. He wasn't shooting at the ground a warning shot. He's pushed out with two hands looking straight at me. We, I saw his gun. Our postures were the same looking at each other. Uh, when he fired that shot. Only one officer was wearing a body camera during the execution of the warrant that night, but it wasn't turned on because Maddenly said it wasn't police procedure in these types of situations. Do you believe if you had body cameras, this wouldn't have happened? No, the incident would have still happened, but it would have been shown on camera what happened. This wouldn't even be an issue. This wouldn't be a case. You'd never hear about it. Mm. Michael Strahan would never know about this case if we had cameras on that night. How would you have done it differently if you could have? We would have either served the no-knock warrant or we would have done the normal thing we do, which is five to 10 seconds, to not give people time to formulate a plan, not give time, people time to get their senses so they, they have an, an idea of what they're doing. Because if that had happened, I'm telling you, Mike, if that had happened, Brown Taylor would be alive. You believe she'd be alive 100%, if that had happened? I believe if you had alive. just stormed in yes. and not given them time? I do. Say her name! In the months following, protests erupting across the country. Celebrities like Oprah and Beyonce calling for the officers involved to be arrested and be criminally charged with Brianna's death. What was your feelings watching all that unfold after this? Mostly frustration. And the frustration came from 
our command and from the mayor's office because there was so much disinformation out. Because this is not relatable to a George Floyd. This is nothing like it. It's not an Ahmaud Arbery. It's nothing like it. These are two totally different type incidences. It's not a race thing like people want to try to make it to be. This is a point where we were doing our job. We gave too much time. When we go in, I get shot, we return fire. This is not us going hunting somebody down. This is not kneeling on a neck. This is nothing like that. And I know I'm, I'm not going to sit here and act like playing the big victim card. But I, I mean, I was a victim in this as well. My family has been a victim in this. They have had to go in hiding. They have had death threats. When somebody sits back from their mansion and accuses somebody they don't know of being a racist and, and being a dirty cop and being a murderer, when that's not the case, that, that does affect you. You were called racist. Mm -hmm. Are you racist? No, not at all. Do you think there is a racist divide between the community and the LMPD? I think there are, there are people who stir things up and, and make it more that. Because when you're dealing with criminal element, you know, you talk about racial profiling, mm -hmm. good police anyway, police I've worked with don't racial profile, you criminal profile. Let's address the fact that just because you're black, you're a threat. It's not the case. I'm not scared of you. Well, that's, you're that's how black men feel. That's how black women feel. But does that make it real? If it's because how you feel, then it's real. No, not necessarily. So what is the difference between criminal profile and racial profiling? Criminal profiling is when you get to know an area, uh -huh. okay? I work, if when you work in an area long enough, you can tell by people's demeanors, if you pull up beside somebody and they don't make eye contact, they swerve off, there's just different elements of people's psychological game that they, that they put out that you can tell when you've done something long enough. It's so basically, it's a feeling. Not just a feeling. I mean, it's a feeling that goes along with, with what you've experienced, with what is in the area, what should or shouldn't be. You look at a George Floyd, what happened to him? is tragic, it was horrible. Everybody looked at that and said, Phew. wrong, bad, disgusting. And what happens? They end up getting locked up, which in my opinion, and I don't know the ins and outs of the case, and I'm very careful now to judge other people for Monday morning quarterbacking, but in my opinion, that was the right call, whether he died of an overdose or, or whatever. But what happened after that, in my opinion, George Floyd was not a model citizen. It's very hard for me to sit here hear George Floyd died of an of a open overdose. He died because someone was kneeling on his neck for minutes. And I agree with that. In regards of him being a model citizen or not, he didn't deserve that. No one deserved that. Nobody said he did. So I just, I just demonized it. I said it's horrible. No one has been charged in connection with Taylor's death. An autopsy confirmed she died of multiple gunshot wounds. One officer in the case, Brett Hankinson, has been charged with three counts of wanton endangerment for endangering neighbors when he opened fire. He's pled not guilty. And if Brianna's mother, Tamika Palmer, is watching this, is there anything that you would like to say to her? Ms. Palmer, nobody should ever have to go through what you're feeling. Nobody can sympathize or feel what you're feeling unless they've lost a child. There's no way I could ever tell you enough how much I wish this hadn't taken place. No amount of money in the world is gonna change that. Police reform's not gonna bring her back, but I just hope that you can find it in your heart at some point to find some peace, find some, some love in the future, and, and I pray that everybody learns something from this and that this tragic never happens again to any other family. And we know Manley wasn't indicted for the death of Breonna Taylor. And there is a pending FBI investigation to determine if her civil rights were violated. And, and I asked him about the leaked email that he sent out to his fellow officers where he used the term to describe protesters, used the term peaceful protesters when he, and he also called them thugs. And he goes, they aren't worth your career or freedom. He says he's referring to the protesters who were causing property damage and taunting officers. Kind of, it, it didn't, you know, frust frustrating at time to hear some of the things that were said. And we have, there's a lot more. There's so many discrepancies. Yeah. So there's many so many discrepancies. Do you have a sense of why he wanted to speak out? I think he said seven months of not being able to say anything has just built up. And he released this email that, that was publicly was scrutinized the night before the grand jury came back with their decision. Again, he called protesters thugs. And, and he he stands, said, well, he, Eric, was peaceful. And that was the question. How are they peaceful, but yet thugs? And his, his explanation 
you be the judge and if it works out and if you understand it or not. And then what he said about George Floyd as was, well. Was, was, yeah, way, in my opinion, left field. Had nothing to do with this. Yeah. Trying to bring the character of someone into the situation where they were basically killed made no sense to And me. at the end of the day, an innocent black woman is dead. Yes, unnecessarily. Michael's really great. Thank you. Thank you. You can see a lot more of that tonight on Nightline.